So mescaline is really the grandfather of all of the rest of the psychedelic phenethylamines, and this structure inspired Alexander Shulgin to make a number of modifications that improved its potency. So for example, TMA, which stands for trimethoxyamphetamine, uh, was one of the earliest analogues he made, and due to the addition of this alpha-methyl group here, uh, the potency increased by a factor of about two. And then in this second compound, TMA2, by simply moving the methoxy group one position around the ring, uh, this compound is actually about 10 times more potent than mescaline, just in terms of pure dose in man. So mescaline, a typical dose would be maybe 400 milligrams. TMA2, 10 times as potent, 40 milligrams would have an equivalent effect. Now, mescaline is a simple enough compound that as well as asking simply how can we make this, uh, we can also ask the question what are the different ways in which this can be made and what are the relative advantages and drawbacks of the different routes you might choose. Uh, now fortunately for us we don't really have to do any ring synthesis because this 345 trimethoxy aryl substitution pattern is quite common in nature uh, and as a result the starting materials are very cheap. So this aldehyde looks like a perfectly reasonable starting material and because the aldehyde is cheap then anything else closely related to it is also going to be cheap. So for example this acid is also an abundantly available starting material. And in retrosynthetic terms uh, we've got this electrophilic site here, so uh, the, the synthon that we require, uh, we, we need to bring in some sort of nucleophilic fragment which will provide us the uh, amino group. So whilst this species obviously doesn't exist in the real world, uh, it's a tool to help us think what sort of latent functionality uh, we need to introduce. And so an example synthon that might provide this functionality is the cyanide ion. So if you have a, a cyanide, it's uh, got a negative charge on the carbon and it's nucleophilic at that side. It can react with some alkyl electrophile. So, so we've alkylated it. We've now made an alkyl nitrile. Uh, and then when that cyanide is reduced, you add hydrogens everywhere, right? And so the amino functionality is revealed. So we could say that that cyanide ion bore the sort of latent functionality uh, embodied by this fragment. I'm going to save myself a lot of tedious drawing for the rest of the video and abbreviate the 345 trimethoxyphenyl substituent as a generic aryl group because that'll never change. Uh, the main question is how do we install the ethyl amino side chain of mescaline? And the first route I'm going to talk about is from a 1952 paper in Helvetica Chimica Acta. Uh, I mentioned the aldehyde and the acid are easily accessible starting materials and so these authors started off with the acid chloride which is obviously accessible from the acid. And in step one, they react the acid chloride with diazomethane. So the nitrogen has some electrons here and it reacts almost like an enol. It's nucleophilic at carbon. Uh, that adds into the carbon ion. And then after loss of a chloride ion, uh, the product is this alpha diazo ketone. And the thing about these alpha diazo ketones is they very much like to lose nitrogen, right? You can see that's basically just a molecule of dinitrogen waiting to escape as nitrogen gas. All it needs to do is take those electrons from the bond next to it. Uh, and indeed, that is what happens if the molecule is treated with silver salts and heated. Uh, nitrogen gas is evolved. That's an entropic driving force for the reaction. And what's left behind is this carbene species, uh, which is quite interesting because this carbon only has six electrons. It's desperate to get back to fully satisfied valency and uh, reacquire eight electrons in its outer shell. And so what happens is the electrons from the carbene make another bond uh, to the carbon next door, the carbonyl carbon. At the same time, the aryl group sort of migrates along that bond, uh, resulting in the formation of a ketene. And the ketene is super electrophilic at this central carbon because it's next to this electron withdrawing oxygen and it's completely sterically unhindered and these ketenes can react with various nucleophiles and so what the authors did is they react their ketene with ammonia the electrons temporarily go up onto the oxygen and then that's almost like some sort of enol which can pick up a proton at the end and the product after this nucleophilic addition to the ketene is a terminal amide and you can see now that's very close to mescaline itself, it just needs to be reduced. Uh, and the authors do this by using the general purpose, very powerful reducing agent, lithium aluminium hydride. And so that'll reduce most things you throw it at. And that's how they complete their synthesis of mescaline. So next I'll go over the route that Shulgin used at least half of the time in Pikau. 